Daniel chapter number 6. Familiar, familiar story in the Bible. Um, but I want to begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom a hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was the first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion or fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. And the, all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, the princes, the counselors, the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, king Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing. Our souls have been helped by the good singing tonight. God, I'm glad you never changed. God, I'm glad it didn't come to stay. It came to pass. Lord, we ought to have you on our hearts and on our minds throughout the day. Our day would be a lot better if we do. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us now from the word of God. I pray you'd sit down amongst us. I pray that you'd minister to hearts. I pray those that might be low, you'd lift them up. Those that might be weak, you'd strengthen them. Those that might be seeking, they'd find. Lord, whatever the need is of every heart, it'd be met in Jesus tonight. Certainly, if there's any amongst us, Unsaved, We know it's your will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And I pray, Father, that they'd be saved even this very night. Now help us this night to understand this is more than just a story. This is a true account from the Word of God, how you did something miraculous uh, in the life of one of your children. Now, Father, have your will and way amongst us. Uh, use this unworthy vessel, and Father, will not fail to bless you and praise you what you do tonight, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice a few things. First thing I want you to notice is Daniel. I want you to look at Daniel for a minute. Uh, we know the book's named after him. We know in studying the Bible that Daniel had a gift from God. He had the ability to discern and, and be able to interpret dreams. We know that Daniel... Uh, 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 faced a lot in his days, but uh, in this chapter we find some very specific things about Daniel. Look with me at verse number 3. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, uh, uh, it says, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Verse 1, we find there's 120 princes, and three presidents, and Daniel's above them all. And look what uh, um, these fellows that didn't like him had to say about him. Verse number four. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find, or but they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. And we find this Daniel has an excellent spirit, 
We find they can find no occasion against him. They could find no fault, no error in his life. I mean, what a testimony. I mean, uh, 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 I, I don't know if you can have a better testimony than this. Uh, uh, can I say he excelled because he had an excellent spirit? Uh, and can I say there's a lot of people that aren't blessed because they got a foul spirit? The Bible says you reap what you sow. And if you got a bad spirit, you're not going to do well in the, in the economy of God. Uh, and we see he's got an excellent spirit. We find that he, uh, 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 they can find no fault. They can find no error. Boy, I wish I could say that, uh, but I can't say that about myself. Uh, I find a lot of faults, and I'm sure many other folks do. Uh, but this man, Daniel, had no faults. Uh, he had no errors. Uh, uh, that didn't mean he was sinless. That just means you could not touch his character. Uh, 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 but can I say, uh, 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 when I thought about him having an excellent spirit, uh, he had this excellent spirit even even though he was faced uh, with living in a foreign land. Uh, uh, do you realize he was taken away captive uh, 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 into Babylon, uh, and then he was taken captive from Babylon into the uh, uh, Medes and the Persians' kingdom? Uh, uh, can you imagine uh, uh, this fellow being raised a Jew, being raised around the things of God, uh, uh, but because uh, the Jews turned their backs against God, uh, uh, they were overthrown, uh, and now Daniel's being carried away. He goes to Babylon, uh, and God blesses him there uh, and he finds favor with the king there then that king becomes a knucklehead uh, that kingdom gets overthrown now Daniel's uh, uh, taken away to another foreign land hey I know folks uh, if they lose their job they'll quit on God uh, this fellow's been taken captive two different times and yet he has an excellent spirit hmm? not only uh, um, being faced with being in a foreign land but he has his freedoms lost He's a slave, but yet God blesses him to be over all the presidents and princes of this land because he has an excellent spirit. Hmm? And you want a promotion on the job? Quit brown nosing the boss, just get an excellent spirit. You be faithful like they said Daniel was. You uh, 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 live a life without fault, without error, where they can't touch your character, and you have an excellent spirit. See if uh, business don't pick up in your life. Mm -hmm. well, well, that went over real good, didn't it? Can I say he had an excellent spirit, even though he was faced with false loyalty? He's over the whole realm, and all the while they're trying to stab him in the back. He's got an excellent spirit. Mm hmm? Got an excellent spirit. Lord have mercy. Oh, some of y'all on the job, you get a coworker talking bad about you, and you get you get all messed up. You get your panties in a wad, and you get your nose out of sort, and I mean everything in the world because a coworker looks at you funny. They're trying to kill this guy, and he's got an excellent spirit. Hmm? And we see Daniel. Now notice the decree. Verse number 7. Look what it says. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, the princes, the counselors, captains, I mean the whole crowd, they consulted together to establish a royal statute to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now we find that they made a, a, a remark in verse 5 that they wouldn't find any fault in Daniel except it be concerning the law of his God. Yeah. Hmm? Now, let me just say something right here. How's your spirit tonight? I appreciate you being here on this Wednesday night. It shows you're faithful. How's your spirit? How's your testimony? How's your coworkers? What, what do they think about you? Other than that, you're nut because you came to church tonight, huh? Uh, I did hear this. They said, you know, uh, on Monday the president said we shouldn't congregate with more than ten. That means ten per pew. He didn't say any specifics. He said no more than ten. I think that ten per pew. So how's your spirit? Amen. Hmm? 
Now notice, they couldn't touch his character. They couldn't touch his faithfulness. They couldn't touch anything about his life. They could find no fault or no occasion. So the only way we're going to get him is we've got to deal with how he serves as God. Hmm? So they gave a decree. Now listen. By law, they cannot mandate that we don't worship without declaring martial law and doing away with the Constitution. My Aunt Lynn sang a song called Going Back. It says, we're coming down to whether you're in or out. What are you going to do if they make a decree that we can't assemble in this building? You see, that ought to already be decided. Amen. Hmm? You see, I have a firm foundation my feet have been set upon a rock. His name is Jesus. And he's not only the rock of ages, he's also my anchor. Uh, he's already uh, 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 steadfast and sure within the veil, settled this thing. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, they made this decree, but what old Daniel do? He just went uh, right back to what he always done. Uh, he said, you got what Job said, naked I came in this world, naked I'm going out of this world. Uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, he said, I already lived through Babylon. Uh, I'm here in Persia. God's been good to me here. Here. Uh, hey, God's been so good to me. I'm not turning back on God now. Uh, uh, and he put his face toward Jerusalem, uh, threw up his hand, said, Oh God, uh, you're my God. Uh, you're my Lord. Uh, you've been good to me. Uh, and Father, I love you. Uh, and I'm going to serve you. Uh, come with me. Uh, uh, Father, I'm going to take care of uh, my end. You just take care of your end, huh? He already had that thing settled. You ought to already have that settled. Hmm? Bless God, they padlocked the door. We'll just meet out in the front yard. Sure. Say, we can't meet out in the front yard. Shoot, we'll meet at the house. How many acres you got in Williamstown, Miss Sheila? 43. We can meet there. Hallelujah, huh? Bless God. Uh, hey, I've known him as of tonight. 46 years uh, I've been walking with him. Uh, he's been a friend to this old boy. Uh, he's never forsaken me. Uh, hey, he's never left me. Uh, it didn't matter what valley I was going through. Uh, it didn't matter what kind of surgery I was facing. Uh, it didn't matter what sickness came my way. Uh, last year when cancer came calling, uh, Jesus showed up. Uh, I'm telling you, he's been good to this old boy. Hey, uh, I'm not going to turn back now. Uh, I'm heaven bound with the hammer down. Uh, it don't matter. Let the viruses come. Uh, let the lions come. Uh, let the decrees come. Uh, I'm going to serve Jesus. Uh, we see the decree. Hmm. Now listen, I've said since last week, if you're sick, stay home. If you got a compromised immune system, stay home. But hey, if you're saved, you ought to desire to be here. Huh? Huh? We see Daniel. We see the decree. Can I say this decree was commanded? This decree was conveyed. Daniel knew what was at stake. Daniel was there when the king signed it. When they made forth the decree, Daniel didn't kick and fuss and stomp and get in a bad spirit. He just stood in the shadows because he's already settled in his heart. And they knew what, the, what was at stake. It was conveyed. And can I say, he knew it had consequences. Mm, didn't matter. Daniel knew God and he wouldn't turn his back on God. Uh, can I say, for years people say, oh, saying, oh, I love Jesus. But you, knock, you mark her down. As time goes on, before the Lord comes back, you're going to find out who's real and who's not. That's right. Amen. You see, I've done, 
I've read, done read too much church history. I've read where they drug them out and they t tied them to a stake and they set them on fire because uh, uh, they would not uh, uh, renounce the name of Jesus. Uh, I've seen, uh, I'm talking about the religious crowd. Uh, I've seen them boil them in oil because they would not deny the Lord Jesus. Uh, I've seen them uh, 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 have to watch their loved ones' heads chopped off uh, because they would not deny the Lord Jesus. Uh, uh, friend, can I say that same hatred uh, of the devil still in the world today? Uh, and hey, uh, there are folks, they find out we're still worshiping. They're not going to like it. Uh, but can I tell you, they can love it. Jesus has been good to me. Uh, and I'm going to serve the Lord Jesus. Praise uh, I want you to notice, if you will, the dedication there in verse number 10. He just went back to doing what he'd always done. Did it not say that part of his testimony was, was he was faithful? Huh? That means on the mountaintop or in the valley. He's faithful. We see his dedication, verse number 10. But then I want you to notice the den in verse 16. The Bible says, Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and they cast him into the den of kitty cats. Is that what it says? Can I say, God, pin down the word of God, and it is true. The Bible said it was a den of lions, plural. Hmm? It wasn't what was that one on Doc Tarry? What was it? Cornelius the cross-eyed lion. It wasn't him. Clarence. Clarence cross-eyed lion. It wasn't him. These were lions that could see and lions that were hungry. Hmm. They cast da Daniel down into a den of lions. Can I say some things about this den? It was a place that was fearful. And I said, Daniel was not the first person who went to that den. They didn't cage them lions up because they just wanted to have a zoo. They caged those lions up to make an example of those that stood in opposition to the king. Everybody knew what that den of lions was like, just like in Jerusalem when the Romans had a place called Mount Calvary, and people that went to that place, they died the death of crucifixion. It was a place that made a statement that put other people under subjection. We find it was a fearful place. Can I say this? It was a place that seemed final. People that went there didn't come out. Amen. Hmm? Can I say it was a place that had a foe? Them lions were the enemy of whoever went in there. 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You may have to face some lions in your days. Hmm? Can I say, sometimes things look like they're final. Like there is no hope. But I believe I just heard a song where it didn't come to state, come to pass. Hmm? Brother Jack, I remember when they gave you your diagnosis, it didn't sound like there's much hope. I'd never heard where they was going to take, have to make an esophagus from your stomach and all kinds. That all sounded bad. I'm glad you didn't have to go through that, aren't you? Aren't you glad the doctors aren't the final authority? Huh? Hmm? Uh, Miss Brandy, when you found that lump here a few weeks ago, that, that looked kind of final. Aren't you glad it wasn't anything? Hmm? It's not the final authority. The final authority's in glory. His name is Jesus. Huh? All judgment has been committed to him. He is the great physician. Sometimes things seem fearful. Sometimes they seem final. Sometimes it seems like the devil's camped on your doorstep. That doesn't mean it's the end. Uh, notice the deliverance. Look with me, if you will, in verse 20. This is what we like about the story. And when he came to the den, talking about the king, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel, and the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, and he was, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? 
Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel, and he shut the lion's mouths, and they have not hurt me, for as much uh, as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, uh, have I done no hurt. Uh, then the king, ex well, then was the king exceeding glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. Uh, so Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no matter uh, of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. Amen. He did come out of the den. The den wasn't the final place. He was delivered. And oh, what a God we serve. Hmm? I'm going to preach on just a little simple thought tonight on God is in the delivering business. Uh, aren't you glad he didn't leave you where he found you? Huh? Aren't you glad he was able to deliver you out of your de uh, depravity? Aren't you glad when you was lost in sin, uh, had no hope, uh, looked like he's going down for the last time, uh, uh, Jesus came to where you was, uh, uh, revealed to you you was a sinner, uh, let you know you was guilty, uh, but let you know he paid your price, uh, let you know you could be saved. Uh, aren't you glad uh, when you called on him he saved you? Uh, but aren't you glad he didn't leave you there? Uh, hey, when I got saved, I didn't know all that I know now. I, I just knew uh, I, uh, there was a burden rolled off on me. Uh, I, I wasn't heavy anymore. Uh, hey, I felt like the weight of the world was gone. Uh, hey, the next day, uh, uh, the sky looked bluer. Uh, the grass looked greener. Uh, the birds sounded sweeter. Uh, I didn't know anything other than fact I was different. Uh, hey, but can I tell you uh, what I found out now? Uh, hey, when hey, I ca called on him, uh, he he not only saved me, uh, he moved in, uh, and things began to move out, uh, and he changed me. Uh, hey, I went down to the altar of sinner. Uh, I got up a saint of God. Uh, I went down a pupper. Uh, I got up and I owned it all. Uh, hey, what a blessing to be a part of the family of God. Hallelujah. He's in the delivering business. Never been a sinner too far off in sin. God couldn't save him. Change them and deliver them. Never been a situation too bleak God couldn't deliver you from. Uh, hey, uh, uh, the angel of the Lord told Mary when she was trying to put her mind around the fact uh, the Lord told her she was going to have the Lord's son. Uh, and she said, how could this be? I never knew a man. Uh, she said, with man this is impossible. Uh, but with God all things are possible. God's in the delivering business. God's able to deliver you, friend. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen alcoholics and drug addicts. Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, they couldn't give them up. Uh, but, oh, they met Jesus. Uh, and he took them from them. Huh? I've seen some uh, uh, that had all kinds of problems, uh, all kinds of things that used to haunt them. Uh, but all it took was Jesus walking into their life. Uh, and he delivered them from those things. Uh, he's in the delivering business. Yeah. Can I say... There's nothing too hard for God. It was a great day in my life, and I realized I didn't have to. He had already done it. Yes, sir. He's in the delivering business. Can I say, notice how God delivers. Can I say, first of all, God sent. Look at verse number 22. This is what the Bible says. Daniel says, my God... It's a good day when I realized he was more than the God. He was more than a God. It's a great day when he became my God. Huh? huh? Oh, he is the God. He's Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Huh? But can I say 46 years ago tonight he became my God. Huh? Became my Lord. Huh? He's my King. Huh? He's my Abba Father. Huh? I'm part of his family. Huh? What a blessing. I can call on him and he knows my name. Huh? He said, my God has sent his angel. Hmm? Can I say, mm, when it comes time you need him delivered, um, God sends somebody your way. Can I say, whenever you find just the word angel, um, that means his minister. Now in the Old Testament, when you see angel of the Lord, that's the Lord Jesus being manifested in the Old Testament. But here he said, my God has sent his angel. I don't know if it's Michael. I don't know if it's Gabriel. I don't know if it's some angel named Fred. I don't know. 
But God knew who needed to go, and God sent him. God sent to deliver. Listen, uh, there's been times when I was faced with things uh, and God sent a preacher uh, with the message uh, and it was exactly what I needed to hear. Uh, hey, there were times uh, when I needed an answer uh, and God sent an answer. Uh, maybe it came through the mail. Uh, maybe it came through a phone call. Uh, maybe it came through a friend. Uh, but I'm glad God sent the answer that I needed. Uh, there's been times uh, when I thought there's no hope uh, and God sent peace. Uh, and I'm glad he's got a peace passes all understanding I, I don't need to know how God's going to do it all I, I just need to know he's going to do it uh, and when he sends peace it'll be alright uh, peace peace wonderful peace uh, coming down from heaven above uh, hey I'm glad God sends what we need uh, when we need it can I say God has grace for everything you'll face mm. it's an amazing thing with God he don't give it to us till we need it. Now some of you all spend most of your time fretting and worrying about things that you don't need grace for. Because if you needed grace for it, you'd have it. That's so why are you fretting over it. I heard preachers say one time, well, God's not worrying about it. So why in the world am I spending all my time worrying about it? I'll just give it to God, huh? be good, uh, good day for your life if you realize that God's got the grace you need it you need when you need it hmm? yes, there are people all the time fretting over, over dying if you'd read the Bible and you'd believe the Bible the Bible makes it clear to be absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord and the Bible also makes it clear O grave where's thy victory O death where's thy sting can I help you something? For a believer, there is no more sting of death. Death doesn't hurt. You say, what, what if you get burned up in a fire? It don't hurt. Huh? What if you uh, I, I get uh, if you fall out of an airplane? Uh, I, it don't hurt. Uh, 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 can I say uh, uh, it's not the landing that kills you; it's a fall. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, listen. Uh, everybody's worried about how they're going to die. Uh, it's not your time to die. Uh, when it comes your time to die, God's got dying grace. Uh, then it don't matter because you know you're crossing over uh, and you're going to be with Him, uh, and it'll be all right. Uh, and there is no pain. Uh, there is no. Sin. Suffering. Uh, Jesus took all that on the cross uh, and he just gives us peace to cross over. Amen. They was bouncing rocks off Stephen's head and he's crawling, crying on the Lord. Uh, he said, uh, uh, Lord, uh, don't lay this to the charge. Uh, and he fell down and went to sleep. Yeah. Woke up in glory. Huh? Yeah. Can I say, quit worrying about stuff. God's got grace when you need it. Here Daniel's in the den of lions. I'm here to tell you, if you ever need God, it's when you're in a den of lions. There's no escape. Can I help you with something about being down in that hole with them lions? The only way out was up. Does not Hebrews 12 tells us looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith? When you can't see a way out, I've got good news. Just look up. Huh? Just look up. <laughs> You'll find him. But long before Daniel had time to look up, because I imagine as soon as he hit the den floor, uh, uh, the lions were licking their chops. Say, what happened? God sent. Huh? Huh? I don't know how many times before I realized I had a need, God already sent the answer. Hmm? Can I say God is in the delivering business? God sent. Can I say this? God shut. Look what the Bible says. Verse 22. My God has sent his angel and hath shut the lion's mouth. Hmm? Uh, can you imagine them ferocious lions, king of the jungle, probably female lions in there. They're the ones that do the hunting. They tear apart the prey and take it to the male lion because everybody knows men are lazy. <laughs> That's your time, ladies, to be spiritual. You could have said amen right there, all right? Mm. them lions are ferocious they're looking at Daniel and say he's got good meat on his bones but not for long and then God sends his angels can you imagine them lions when they got to see listen you don't understand all this stuff you realize God made everything 
And he didn't make everything from a little slug crawling out of a pond and then it turned into another slug and then it turned into a monkey and then it turns into uh, a brother Aaron. That's not how it worked. <laughs> God made everything after its own kind. Do you realize the animal kingdom and the nature kingdom, they do what God designed them to do? Do you know why trees and plants go, grow upward? They do that to bring glory to God. They're pointing to God. Sure. Hmm? Do you know what trees' leaves do? They blow in the wind because that's what God designed them to do. You know when the, the wolves howl at the moon, they're glorifying God. That's what God designed them to do. You know when them birds sing, they're singing praise unto God because that's what he designed for them to do. Can I help you with something? Uh, 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 Daniel's uh, King Darius, uh, 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 those princes and those presidents, uh, none of them knew that angel was down in that den, but those lions did. Sure. They lost all sight of Daniel when the angel showed up. And you say, how did he shut their mouths? He gave them a good case of lockjaw. They looked at that angel and they, they just went over and said, well, we ain't messing with this guy tonight. Uh, who knows, when that king hollered down there at Daniel, he might have been over there laying on one of them lions uh, asleep. And you've heard them cats purr, man. That puts you to sleep real good, huh? They's all snoring down there in the den, huh? We've seen that God shut the Bible says no man opens the door that God shuts and no man can shut a door that God opens because God's the final authority. And there's been a lot of folks that thought one thing, thought a thing was headed this direction and God steps in it and goes a different direction. Hmm. All I know is the door was open for dinner that night but God shut it up. Hmm. God sent, God shut. He's in the delivering business. You know why I shut the lion's mouths? Because that's what Daniel needed. Yes, sir. Hmm. Can I say this? God saves. Amen. Hmm. Look what it says. Look at verse 22. God has shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. Hmm. Now it's a miracle God shut their mouths. But they didn't even take a swipe at him. You ever see one of them cat's paws? Huh? That thing smacked Daniel and knocked his head off his shoulders. He not only shut their mouths, he saved him. Can I say, it's one thing to be saved by the grace of God so you don't have to die and go to hell and you get to go to heaven. That's a blessing. If you're not saved, I highly recommend it. There's nothing like being saved. Uh, you say, if I get saved, well, I act like you. You might act, like, well, you might act worse. You might act like Phil. I don't know. But I guarantee you, you get saved, you'll have no regrets. You ever get regret getting saved, Phil? Huh? You ever get regret getting saved out of a Catholic church? Never. Yeah, see, you couldn't even go to church if you was a Catholic. They've shut the doors, huh? <laughs> Listen, one thing that he saved us from sin. Can I say? Every day he saves us. Yes. Amen. He saves us from car wrecks. He saves us from the enemy setting his sights with bow pulled back and an arrow set on us. The Lord steps in. I mean, the devil would like to take you out right now. Hmm? He'd like you to get that corona so you can come give it to all us. You do, I'm smacking you, okay? No, I'm not, I wouldn't smack him. Punch him, but I wouldn't smack him. You know what I'm saying? No. But the devil would. He'd like to take every one of us out. Because every day you live for Jesus, you're being a light to somebody and he's starting to lose his clutches on them. But he saves you every day. He saves you from disease. He saves you from uh, uh, car wrecks. He saves you from the devil. He saves you uh, 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 many times from your own self. Yeah. I want to tell you something. A lot of times we say the devil made me do it. It wasn't the devil at all. A lot of times I'm my own worst enemy. Yeah. Hmm. Can I say, he saves us every day that you wake. He gives you newness of life. Yes, he redeems you for the day. He saves you. I've said it before. You've heard me say it many times. After we've bowed at the feet of Jesus in glory for however many years it is, because it's only one eternal day, after we thank him and kiss him and love on him for delivering us from sin... We're going to look up our guardian angel and we're going to go thank him that he never took any days off. Yes, 
It'll be revealed to you how many times uh, you was heading down the highway and somebody was about ready to take you out and, uh, and the Lord just told you to pull off and get you something to drink or, or your guardian angel caused them to go a different direction. You don't know how many times your life has been spared, but God does because you belong to him. Amen. We've seen that he sent, he shut, he saves. But notice that God saw. Look, if you will, verse 22 again. He said, They have not hurt me for as much as before him, the Lord, innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Do you see that God saw that Daniel was innocent? God's keeping a record. God knows when people do you wrong. You know what he says? He tells us just keep worshiping the Lord. But he says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. God saw. A lot of times you don't even know what's going on behind your back on the job. Maybe even in your family. or that, But God does. Hmm. Sometimes God just gives you a little extra handfuls on purpose. Sometimes he gives you a little extra blessing. Sometimes he gives you a little extra grace. You don't even know why, but God saw you've been innocent in something. Your character's been unflawed. You've been without error. You've had an excellent spirit. And God says, you know what? I'll just dump a little more on them. Boom. God saw. Hmm. It'd be a great day in your life when you realize you don't have to defend yourself. You've got an advocate with the Father. His name is Jesus. He's our mediator. He's our high priest. And he is keeping a record. Let me say this. I'll be done. Brother Tommy's about to pass out over there. We see that God's a delivering God. God sent. God shut. God saves. God saw. Say, Brother Doug, are you really not worried about coronavirus? I'm not. I, re I revealed to you last week. Before that, there was Ebola. Before that, there was SARS. Before that, it was MRSA. Before that, it was swine flu. Before that, it was bird flu. I mean, it's, it's always something. I can remember back when it was the killer bees. I can remember back when... Can I say, there are all kinds of things in this world that can kill us. But I'm reminded in John chapter 10, it says, I'm in his hand. And his hand's in the Father's hand. And no man can pluck me out of his hand. Yes, sir. That means in order for it to get to me, it's got to go through God's hand. It's got to go through Jesus' hand to get to me. And if he allows it to get to me, he has a reason for it. I'll just trust Jesus. You say, well, that's foolish. You're crazy. Well, you can call me whatever you want to. I'll just still trust him. Because I promise you, if I hang around you long enough, you'll let me down and I'll let you down. But you know who's never let me down? Jesus. He's in the delivering business. Now, I, again, he sent, he shut, he saves, he saw. But I want you to notice the secret. This is very important. Because I've known people. They face things and it seems like the Lord doesn't deliver them. I've known some folks that... They'll come to church and they'll hear Miss Cinda stand up and testify how good God's been to her. And I've heard you say that many times. God's been good to us, huh? You haven't stood up braggedly. You haven't stood up and st uh, talked about a bunch of things that God's blessed you with. You just said God's been good to us. Mm -mm. And I've heard other folks uh, uh, say, uh, uh, well, God's never been good to me. Well, friend, he's letting you breathe his air. Come on. Hmm. He gave you enough strength to get out of bed today. Uh, he gave you a job. He gave you a little money in your pocket. Gave you something to drive. Gave you a place to live. You're not living in a cardboard box tonight. You're not uh, uh, living in a third world country where they got something far worse than Corona 19 uh, running around. God has been good to you. You are living in the greatest country on the earth. But you know why some people don't have the blessings of God that others do? Well, Brother Clint, some of it is they don't have an excellent spirit. Some of it is their character's flawed. They're not right standing with God. They're not faithful. God honors faithfulness. But the real secret right here with Daniel, who is being faithful, and I've seen folks that were faithful go through some, some tragic things. Daniel is faithful. He's got an excellent spirit. 
That's not why God sent, shut, saved, and, and secured him out of all this. Here's why. It's found in verse 23. Look what it says. This is the Bible now. Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take, take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him. Here it is. Here's the, here's the secret. Because he believed in his God. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For those that come to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Say, Brother Doug, do you really believe God's a delivering God? Oh yeah, he's delivered me on many occasions. I hate to keep talking about cancer, but it's just on my mind right now. I'm just going to tell you. When she told me I had cancer, she'll testify to this. I told her this. I said, it didn't catch God by surprise. It'll be okay. I didn't fret. I didn't look back. When I went in the hospital, I took my blood pressure. My heart rate was 49 beats per minute. I'm three beats from being in a coma. That's how tore up I was. I just believe God is a big delivering God. Is this, is, is this coronavirus a real thing? Yeah, it's a real thing. Is it as bad as it's being portrayed? I don't know. But I just believe in my God. I just believe in Him so much that if I do get it, He'll heal me from it. If not, He'll take me on to glory and it won't matter. Because nobody's going to glory before it's your time. He's a delivering God. The secret to God delivering you out of whatever you're faced, facing tonight or whatever you're faced with, is you must believe in Him. And I'm not talking about head knowledge. I'm talking about believe in Him when you can't even find any kind of knowledge to base any facts on. You're just going to believe and trust God. Hmm? Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. There was, they believe, somewhere between 6 and 15 million Jews that came out of Egypt. They get down the Red Sea and they're in a panic. They're thinking, Pharaoh's army's coming to destroy us. There is no hope. One man stood up, raised a staff, and said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Moses believed. And God rolled back that sea. They walked across on dry ground. And God destroyed their enemy in the very sea that he delivered them from. Yes, sir. It don't take everybody believing. It just takes somebody believing. Now my question to you tonight, do you believe God is a delivering God? The preacher, I got a loved one that is in the depths of sin. Do you believe God can deliver them from the depths of their sin? Do you believe God can send revival? That God will send revival? Do you believe that God is able? That's the question the king asked. Is your God able? That was already settled before Daniel went to the den. Yeah. My God is able. That's right. Oh, king, live forever. My God sent an angel and shut the lion's mouth. Do you believe in him? Friend, that's what it's going to take to truly be a light, to truly have an excellent spirit, truly to be without fault. Friend, God's got it taken care of. Throughout the Bible, there's so many promises. David said, he's my rock. He's my high tower. He's my shield. Hmm? The secret because he believed in his God. Amen. Friend, the secret to God's delivering power is just to believe that God will and stand on that faith that he will. Tonight, no matter what you're faced with, God's able to deliver you. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, God wants to save you. 
He went to Calvary and died for you so you wouldn't have to die and go to hell. He wants to save you. You're here tonight and you're saved and you're facing something. Well, get in line. Everybody's facing something. Everybody's got some tragedy, some heartache, some hardships, some tough times, some things you're, 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 you're fretting over. I've got good news. God's still on the throne. The same God that delivered Daniel is our God. You just got to look his way and believe in him and watch and see business picks up in your life. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.